my talk, Emacs Phoenix, extend your editor with the power of a Lisp browser. Who am I? I am Andrea, I work as a closure software engineer somewhere in the middle of the UK, and I inherited my passion for Emacs from my PhD supervisor, and from that moment on, Emacs became the core tool of my daily routine. Um, you can find more about me and my interests at ag91.github.io, that is my blog. Uh, let's get into the talk. So, why Next? Nix is an extensible common Lisp browser. Fundamentally, it's Emacs for web browsing. And why do I say that? I say that because it's, um, this is Nix, and this is a. Uh, you can see that it's organized on with buffers, and you can see that I can uh, invoke command like uh, like I were in Emacs. So I'm using given the same key binding. So for that, I use it com uh, um, MX. Um, and some of the features of Nix are just amazing. So, for example, uh, say that you want to mark some text. This is the way. So, um, I just pressed Control Space, and now I've started a marker. And then I can now I can copy text. And when I am done, I can finish to use Visual Mode. Or, for example, what about I want to navigate without using the, the my mouse? Uh, so I can do something like uh, follow hint and this opens the possibility to press AC to jump on the articles and all of a sudden I, I am in the, in the page with the blog post of the Atlas team um, or for example I can extend my browser from within the browser so you can see that I can evaluate a command uh, a common lisp uh, um, uh, code and it produces the, the result um, and then, for example, I can also auto. This browser comes by default with an integration with your uh, password manager. In my case, it's a pass, and uh, I can copy a password, for example. And uh, and it's just as easy as as is. It comes by default. And another incredibly useful feature that I didn't find in other buff in other browsers is uh, searching between multiple buffer. So this function, search buffers, this command, lets me select uh, some, of the, some of my open buffers and I can look for a string in there. And you will see that the hits are from the, the buffer that I have opened. Uh, so for example, uh, Clojure or, um, or uh, the, the, the YouTube video about Clojure. Uh, but let me get into something very interesting. How can I make Emacs speak to Nix? And uh, for that, let me show you something in a literate uh, programming approach. So this uh, org mode source block is linked to this uh, Nix uh, uh, repo. Uh, so I can define a new command. And when I go in Nix, I can find this new command and I can invoke it. And you can see that there is something in the, in the mini buffer. And um, I can so I can use it from Nix, but I can also do it uh, here. Uh, I can also use it directly from the repo, and you can see that the, the same thing is logged in the in the in the repo. And then uh, with something that I will speak about in in another uh, in in another talk in the conference, Moldable Emacs, I can also just evaluate JavaScript. Um, I would say let's create a playground that uh, allows me to write some uh, JavaScript code and if I evaluate this code I get the title of the web page that is currently open in Nix and the cool thing is that uh, I can do it also directly in uh, Lisp and for example this is parent script that ev evaluates to the same thing it's just the same just document.title only the things in common Lisp um, and you see that Emacs can speak to Nix uh, but also the reverse is true. Nix can speak to Emacs. So, for example, uh, if I am in Nix, and for example, let me go to my blog. Um, if I press here, this is an email link. Um, automatically in Emacs, uh, it will let me compose a message using my email manager. Or, uh, for example, say that always in my blog, I want to write some something here in the search bar. I think that I don't want to write it in in the browser, but in my Emacs, and because I, for example, I have some template uh, for search. Um, if I do this, all of a sudden the text is uh, is uh, added. Um, 
or for example say I'm watching that uh, that uh, closure video and I get to this point and then I say oh this is a very interesting uh, uh, thing let me take a note so I take some note uh, with some text and if I go back in Emacs tada! I found the note and I found it with uh, the duration so I can just jump to the same uh, point and uh, what else um, uh, there is something even uh, bigger that we can do and this is a bit more advanced and this is something that I do again with uh, my moldable uh, Emacs but uh, so say that you want to do some data visualization uh, if we use bigger light for example we want to do visual visualize a scatter plot let me take some example data that could be interesting also to you so say that I have um, this playground that lets me evaluate some uh, some, que some query on, uh, on my orgrom uh, database uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go through my first 100 nodes and collect um, their backlinks or some, some information that I, I found interesting so if I convert this to JSON now all of a sudden this is something that I can put in that uh, Vigalite uh, template that I've showed you uh, a moment ago so I'm gonna find out that file uh, you see that I left a question mark it's something that I still didn't automate uh, completely but saving this file and uh, open it with next uh, you can see that now I have the scatter plot and in these are my actual notes so you can see that if I uh, stay on it it is actually um, uh, are actually my notes so when I am in Emacs what I can do is I click here and now in the background it opened my note and it opened with all my uh, backlinks so you can see that I have embedded in my browser some functionality of Emacs you understand that this is the power of uh, unifying integrating these two experiences and it opens the doors for a lot of interesting interactivity Anyway, uh, what is next? This is this was my talk. What is next? Uh, what is next is continue merging it. The moldable Emacs is something I will present uh, in another talk in this in this uh, conference with web, so that we can extract meaning from the web and we can bring it in Emacs and from Emacs bringing back stuff like a picture uh, I I into a web page, so that we can do fancy visualization. Another thing I want to do is to uh, automate the boring browser uh, flows that I do like for example if I periodically buy something I could uh, do it from within Emacs instead of uh, instead of always clicking around and then I'm just gonna cross fingers so that I hope that this browser will become uh, mainstream so this was my talk thank you for uh, for listening and um, you can find more about it at ag91.github.io on my blog and enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye.